In the heart of some of the world's most remote and unforgiving landscapes lie tribes whose existence is shrouded in mystery and fear. These indigenous communities possess a set of customs, beliefs, and practices that have captivated researchers and sent shivers down the spines of even the most daring explorers. Join us as we embark on an exploration of the scariest tribes you wouldn't want to meet, each with its own unique cultural heritage and enigmatic way of life. Number 1. The Naga Headhunters the Naga Headhunters are an indigenous tribe residing in the remote northeastern region of India, predominantly in the states of Nagaland, Manipur, and Arunachal Pradesh. Situated amidst rugged hills and dense forests, their territory provides a natural fortress for their traditional way of life. What distinguishes the Naga Headhunters is their formidable reputation and distinctive cultural practices which have captured the imagination of outsiders for centuries. Renowned for their mastery over venomous snakes, the Nagas handle these reptiles with remarkable skill, often incorporating them into their rituals and ceremonies to instill fear in their enemies. However, what perhaps fascinates outsiders the most is the Naga tradition of headhunting, an ancient practice deeply entrenched in both ritual and warfare. According to Naga beliefs, the human head holds immense spiritual power, making it the holiest part of the body. By collecting the heads of their foes, the Nagas seek to appease their deities and invite blessings upon their tribe. Number 2. The Suri Tribe The Suri Tribe, also known as the Surma or Suri people, is a fascinating group with a rich cultural heritage primarily located in the southwestern region of Ethiopia and parts of South Sudan. Comprising approximately 34,000 individuals, the Suri inhabit semi-arid plains, foothills, and valleys, where they have developed a distinctive way of life. One of the key features of the Suri tribe is their traditional beliefs centered around a sky deity known as Tumu. Within the tribe, a figure known as the Kimora serves as a mediator between the Suri people and the sky god, playing a vital role in their religious practices. They are skilled hunters and gatherers, relying on traditional methods to sustain themselves. Additionally, the tribe takes great pride in their cultural identity, which is exemplified through practices such as beautifying rituals for women preparing for marriage. Despite their remote location, the Suri tribe has not been immune to conflict, particularly with neighboring groups from Sudan, which occasionally raid Ethiopian territory. These rivalries have sometimes escalated into violent battles, fueled by the availability of modern weaponry obtained from regional conflicts. Number 3. The Chukchi People The Chukchi people, also known as the Chukchi or Luoravetlan, are indigenous inhabitants of the northeastern reaches of Siberia, Russia. Their ancestral homeland spans the Chukotka Autonomous Okrug, a vast and remote region characterized by frigid temperatures, barren tundra, and icy coastlines. This rugged terrain has shaped the Chukchi way of life, influencing their traditional practices, social structure, and cultural identity. Divided into two main groups, the reindeer Chukchi and the maritime Chukchi, these indigenous communities share a common language known as the Chukchi or Luoravetlan dialect. The reindeer Chukchi primarily rely on domesticated reindeer for sustenance, transportation, and clothing. These animals serve as essential sources of meat, milk, fur, and leather, enabling the reindeer Chukchi to survive in the harsh Arctic conditions. In contrast, the maritime Chukchi depend on the sea for their livelihood, engaging in hunting, fishing, and maritime activities along the coastal waters of the Arctic Ocean. Their diet consists of sea mammals such as seals, walruses, and whales, supplemented by fish and marine invertebrates. The maritime Chukchi are skilled seafarers, crafting boats from wooden frames and animal skins to navigate the icy waters of the Arctic. Number 4. The Kazakh Eagle Hunters Tribe The Kazakh Eagle Hunters Tribe is a fascinating indigenous group residing in the vast and rugged terrain of Mongolia's Altai Mountains. 
These skilled hunters, also known as the Berkuchi, have perfected the ancient art of eagle hunting, a tradition deeply rooted in Kazakh culture and history. Nestled amidst the towering peaks and sweeping valleys of Western Mongolia, the Kazakh eagle hunters have forged a unique bond with their majestic golden eagles, known as Berkut in Kazakh. Originating from the nomadic Kazakh tribes of Central Asia, the practice of eagle hunting dates back for centuries, with historical records tracing its roots to the time of Genghis Khan and even earlier. For the Kazakh people, eagle hunting is not just a means of survival, but also a deeply ingrained cultural tradition, symbolizing courage, skill, and reverence for nature. From a young age, members of the Kazakh Eagle Hunters tribe undergo rigorous training in the delicate art of handling and commanding these magnificent birds. Each eagle is carefully selected and trained over several years, forming a profound partnership based on mutual trust and respect between hunter and bird. Number 5. The Mokan Tribe The Mokan Tribe, also known as the Laura or Wetland People, calls the Mergui Archipelago home, a group of approximately 800 islands claimed by both Thailand and Burma. With a population of between 2,000 and 3,000 individuals, the Mokan reside in this remote and isolated region, where they lead a semi-nomadic lifestyle centered around hunting and gathering, particularly relying on the sea for sustenance. The Mokan people's way of life is deeply intertwined with their natural surroundings, and they have traditionally lived in sheet pile houses built over shallow waters, allowing easy access to fishing grounds and protection from storms. Their semi-transient lifestyle involves moving between seasonal settlements on different islands, adapting their fishing and gathering practices to the changing environments. One of the most remarkable aspects of the Mokan culture is their exceptional freediving skills. From a young age, children are trained to hold their breath for extended periods underwater, enabling them to dive deep and gather seafood without the need for diving equipment. Number 6. The Batak Tribe The Batak Tribe, hailing from Palawan, boasts a rich cultural heritage deeply intertwined with the lush landscapes of this Philippine island. Despite their relatively small population, the Batak people have managed to preserve their traditional way of life amidst the encroaching forces of modernization. Nestled within the dense jungles and verdant valleys of Palawan, the Batak tribe primarily relies on Swidden farming, hunting, and gathering to sustain themselves. Their ancestral territory, characterized by creeks, rivers, and occasional access to the sea, provides ample resources for survival. The Batak people's intimate knowledge of the local flora and fauna enables them to navigate their environment with finesse, utilizing plants for medicinal purposes, hunting game for sustenance, and gathering natural resources like honey, rattan poles, and alma resin. One of the most fascinating aspects of Batak culture is their deep spiritual connection to nature. They believe in the existence of nature spirits residing in the rocks and trees of their environment, which they honor and invoke through rituals and ceremonies. These rituals, often involving communal gatherings, chanting, and symbolic gestures, are believed to harness the power of these spirits for healing and protection. Number 7. The Skeleton Clan The Skeleton Clan, also known as the Zorox tribe, hails from a remote and isolated region deep within the thick forest of an undisclosed land. Despite their seclusion, they have captured the imagination of researchers and explorers alike due to their mysterious origins and unique characteristics. The exact location of their territory remains undisclosed, adding to the enigma surrounding the Skeleton Clan. This tribe stands out not only for their unusual appearance, but also for their aggressive behavior towards members of other tribes. They have a long history of attacking and killing individuals from neighboring communities, earning them a formidable reputation among nearby tribes. Despite their unfriendly nature towards outsiders, scientists have managed to obtain DNA samples from them, leading to the discovery of a mysterious gene. The presence of this unknown gene raises intriguing questions about the origins and evolution of the Skeleton Clan. 
Speculations abound, with theories suggesting they may have diverged from other human species or originated from elsewhere. The customs and rituals of the Skeleton Clan are shrouded in secrecy, with outsiders rarely granted access to their inner shelter. They are known to practice elaborate ceremonies involving rhythmic chanting, intricate dance movements, and symbolic gestures that hold deep spiritual significance within their community. Number 8. The Yafo Tribe The Yafo Tribe, nestled within the dense jungles of central Papua New Guinea, remains an enigmatic community largely untouched by the outside world. Situated amidst the lush vegetation and challenging terrain of this remote region, the Yafo people have preserved their traditional way of life, which has captivated explorers and researchers for decades. First encountered by Benedict Allen, a renowned explorer, in 1988, the Yafo tribe welcomed him into their hidden village, offering a rare glimpse into their rich cultural heritage and ancient traditions. Living amidst the abundant rainforest, the tribe has honed unparalleled survival skills, mastering hunting, fishing, and plant cultivation to thrive in one of the world's most challenging environments. What sets the Yafo tribe apart are their extraordinary physical abilities, particularly their remarkable strength and agility, which are said to rival that of crocodiles. Additionally, their exceptional tree-climbing skills enable them to ascend towering trunks effortlessly, providing strategic advantages in both hunting and defense against potential threats. Despite initial apprehensions toward outsiders, the Yafo tribe embraced Benedict Allen, inviting him to partake in their age-old rituals and ceremonies. Number 9. The Cargo Cults Cargo cults emerged primarily in Melanesia, particularly in Papua New Guinea and nearby islands, during the colonial era and have persisted into the modern age. These religious movements were born out of encounters with technologically advanced societies, particularly Westerners, during the colonial period. Indigenous people, observing the material wealth possessed by these outsiders, came to believe that they were favored by powerful supernatural forces. The central belief of cargo cults is that material goods, or cargo, will be delivered to faithful followers by supernatural means, often in the form of airplanes or ships. This belief stems from the indigenous people's observation of Westerners receiving shipments of valuable goods, such as manufactured items, food, and other resources, during the colonial period. To attract this coveted cargo, followers of cargo cults engage in rituals that mimic the behavior and practices of Westerners. This can include building mock airstrips, control towers, and airplanes using local materials like bamboo, palm leaves, and thatch. These structures are intended to resemble the technology and infrastructure associated with modern transportation and communication systems. One of the most famous incidents associated with cargo cults occurred in 1974 during the Two Hostage Crisis. Melanesian rebels hijacked an Air France flight, believing that the airplane would deliver them to the promised land of their ancestors. This event highlighted the depth of belief and desperation among some followers of cargo cults. Number 10. The North Sentinel Tribe The North Sentinel Tribe resides on North Sentinel Island, situated in the Bay of Bengal. This indigenous community is among the last uncontacted tribes in the world, with their lineage tracing back tens of thousands of years. The island, which is part of the Andaman Islands archipelago, is surrounded by coral reefs and dense vegetation, making it extremely difficult to approach. The tribe has developed a unique and self-sustaining way of life that remains largely unchanged by modern civilization. Efforts to establish contact with the North Sentinel tribe have been met with hostility as encounters quickly turn aggressive. The Indian government attempted contact in the late 1960s, but these efforts were abandoned due to the tribe's determined unfriendliness and the risk of exposing them to external diseases. Even attempts to provide aid or assistance have been met with anger as the tribe views outsiders as potential threats to their way of life. Despite their isolation, 
the North Sentinel tribe possesses exceptional skills in hunting, fishing, and survival in their tropical island environment. They rely on traditional methods such as using bows and arrows for hunting and fishing in the surrounding waters. The tribe's resilience is evident in their ability to navigate and thrive in a harsh and remote landscape, showcasing their adaptability and resourcefulness. Number 11. The Mosuo Tribe The Mosuo Tribe, also known as the Nue, resides in the remote regions of China near Lugu Lake, nestled amidst high mountains and deep valleys. Their lifestyle and unique cultural practices have earned them fascination and intrigue from outsiders. The Musuo people are often associated with the concept of walking marriages, a distinctive aspect of their social structure. They have inhabited this region for centuries, maintaining a semi-nomadic lifestyle that revolves around their connection to the land and their communal traditions. One of the most distinctive features of Musuo culture is their social organization, which revolves around matrilineal kinship and a matriarchal family structure. Women hold significant authority within Mosuo society, often serving as the heads of households and making key decisions for the family and community. This matrilineal system extends to property ownership, where land and other assets are passed down through the female line. The practice of walking marriages further distinguishes the Mosuo tribe. In this unique arrangement, couples do not live together in a traditional marital household. Instead, men visit women at night and return to their own homes in the morning. Additionally, the Mosuo people have a rich cultural heritage that includes vibrant festivals, traditional crafts, and intricate rituals. Number 12. The Dzlala Tribe, Kurobu Indians. The Dzlala tribe, also known as the Kurobu Indians, inhabit the dense rainforests of the Javari River Valley, an isolated and remote region in Brazil. Their ancestral territory is characterized by its rich biodiversity and ecological diversity, providing the Dzlala people with abundant natural resources and unique opportunities for survival. Despite their remote location, the Dizlala tribe has managed to preserve their traditional way of life and cultural heritage amidst the encroaching forces of modernization. Living in harmony with their natural surroundings, the Dzlala people have developed intricate knowledge of the flora and fauna of their environment. They rely on traditional methods of subsistence such as hunting, gathering, and fishing in the surrounding waters. This deep connection to nature is reflected in their spiritual beliefs, which revolve around the existence of nature spirits inhabiting the rocks and trees of their environment. These spirits are revered and invoked through rituals and ceremonies believed to possess the power to heal and protect the community. The Dislala tribe's cultural identity is further manifested through their distinctive appearance and adornments. They are known for their unique hairstyle, characterized by cut-off hair at the back and longer hair at the front, as well as intricate body art and decorative objects made from natural materials found in their environment. Number 13. The Kujareno People The Kujareno People, also known as the NLA, are a group of hunter-gatherers and indigenous tribes living in the remote depths of the giant rainforest within the Manu National Park in the Madre de Dios region of Peru. Their home primarily lies within the pristine environment of the Amazon rainforest, where they have maintained their traditional way of life for generations. Living in seclusion, the Kujareno people have developed a deep-rooted aversion to interactions with outsiders. This attitude is understandable given a tragic event dating back to the 1890s when the Peruvian industrialist Carlos Fitzcar arranged a brutal attack on much of the tribe residing along the upper Manu River. Despite this devastating blow, the resilient survivors retreated to remote forest areas where they have resided in isolation ever since. With their roots tracing back centuries, the Kujareno people have forged a unique way of life as hunter-gatherers, relying on the abundant resources of the rainforest for sustenance. Their traditional knowledge of the land, passed down through generations, enables them to navigate the thick jungle with precision and skill, 
harvesting fruits, nuts, and medicinal plants, while also hunting small game for protein. Number 14. The Asmat Tribe. The Asmat Tribe, nestled within the remote and challenging environment of the mangrove thickets in Papua New Guinea, stands out for its unique customs, rich cultural heritage, and formidable reputation. Renowned for their exceptional wood carving skills, the Asmat people craft intricate statues, sculptures, and artifacts that depict historic figures, spirits, and animals with remarkable detail and precision. These artworks not only serve as decorative pieces, but also symbolize their deep spiritual connection to the natural world. Central to the Asmat belief system is their profound spiritual connection to the forest, which they regard as inhabited by powerful spirits and ancestors. Through elaborate rituals and ceremonies involving intricate dances, chants, and offerings, the Asmat people honor and communicate with these spirits, seeking their guidance and protection. However, one of the most striking aspects of Asmat culture, and one that has sparked intense fascination and controversy, is their historical practice of cannibalism. The Asmat's cannibalistic practices, deeply rooted in their religious beliefs and cultural traditions, were not acts of brutality, but were perceived as a means of gaining strength and knowledge from their enemies. While cannibalism was not a daily occurrence, it was reserved for specific ceremonial occasions or as a form of revenge against enemies. Number 15. The Kundiawa Tribe The Kundiawa Tribe, also known as the Chimbu Tribe, hails from the rugged and fertile valleys of Kundiawa, nestled among the towering peaks of the Chimbu province in Papua New Guinea. Their ancestral homeland, characterized by its breathtaking scenery and challenging terrain, has shaped the unique culture and way of life of the Kundiawa people. Living at altitudes of approximately 2,000 meters above sea level, the Kundiawa tribe thrives in an environment that offers both challenges and opportunities. Their traditional livelihood primarily revolves around agriculture, with subsistence farming serving as the cornerstone of their economy. The fertile soil of the highlands allows the Kundiawa people to cultivate crops such as sweet potatoes, taro, and vegetables, providing sustenance for their communities. One of the most striking aspects of Kundiawa culture is their vibrant traditions and captivating dances. Adorning themselves in elaborate attire and intricate body paint, the Kundiawa people perform mesmerizing dances that celebrate their cultural heritage and spiritual beliefs. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.